Hi, I'm Joel Small. There is a small marsh adjacent to our favorite beach access. It is a relatively small area, approximately one acre overall, but it provides a home for a surprising variety of critters. For many years I have observed and sometimes filmed the animals, but have not paid much attention to plants. This year, however, there was a striking difference in appearance. The band of tiny white flowers was new, as was the overall vitality of the plant population. So being curious, I wandered out among them to see if there was any obvious reason why they were suddenly so lush. I was immediately glad I had done so. In addition to the little white cluster of flowers, other types were growing among them or nearby. It's possible they had been there in previous years, but simply hadn't come to my attention. With this video, I hope to make up for that oversight. But first, a proper introduction. From the Journal of Accessible Sciences and our Bird Park 2020 series, we present an overview of selected plant zones. Let's get started. A small stream flows into Puget Sound near our favorite beach access. The stream is spring-fed, providing a continuous supply of water, so the environment along its path is relatively constant. Within our marsh area, we have identified three distinct plant zones. Each have a characteristic color and hue. In real life, it is all green, but for contrast, we show the actual marsh zone in light blue an intermediate zone in bright green, and a sand berm zone in yellow. And while the marsh zone varies little in size, the area that changes most is the sand berm next to the beach. The intermediate zone is left with the area between the two. Our attention will be focused on the two near beach zones. Now I'll try to provide context for an emphasis on the locally unusual soil and substrate conditions. Within this narrow band there are two botanical zones with differing subsoils and plant populations. We change our point of view to illustrate. From bottom of marsh to top of sand berm is about two feet in real life, but exaggerated for illustrative purposes. Water seepage and biologic processes constantly maintain rich organic subsoil under the marsh and intermediate zones, but the sand berm remains mostly sand with occasional seawater saturation. And, uh, oh yes, one more thing. The berm height is sometimes increased by the power of winter storms. Over time, the small variations in sand berm height cause dramatic changes in the area of each zone. Okay, now we are finally ready to talk about the plants and assemblages of plants characteristic of each zone. We don't have much to say about the marsh zone dominated by cattails. Let's move directly to the sand berm zone. It has a population of unique saltwater tolerant plants. Puget Sound gumweed, ragweed, super tall dandelion like plants, and white campion, and their insect friends. Now we visit the intermediate zone, which corresponds to the green area in this overhead view. Yarrow, unidentified white tiny cluster flowers, Puget Sound gumweed, more yarrow, Rumex, and tall sticky hawksbeard, maybe.
Well, okay. I hope this video has helped explain what I saw as a sudden change in our marsh area. The primary cause, I am convinced, is variation in berm height, which in turn provides more or less area to species of plants which are well adapted to that immediate condition. Dozens of other variables, including competing species, destructive insects, and variation in early spring weather conditions contribute to the chaotic nature of this and all other ecosystems. Some of the more interesting plants I have become aware of during my investigation are featured in the videos whose links are provided below. Thanks for watching.